Space. Um, you were asking about space. Yeah. Um, there was a Quaker writer, American, called Parker Palmer. Yeah, yeah. You'll, that, you'll know yeah. about him. Yeah. And he, he talks about the importance of, um, he's talking about churches and such like, of them being places that are hospitable to the soul. Yeah. Places that are hospitable to the soul. To the soul. Places where people can be received for who they are. In the Galgale Trust, we have folks who've been right through the middle of life. People who've suffered all kinds of abuse, have sometimes perpetrated abuse, um, problems with alcohol, drugs, uh, issues of criminality and mental health and the whole shebang. But the fundamental thing is that provided you respect the basic rules of the place, i.e. Uh, not coming in and spreading drugs around and not coming in drunk, bringing alcohol in and so on, Provided you respect the place, you accept it for who you are. Yeah. And we don't ask questions. If you want to talk about your issues, that's fine. Yeah. But we don't push you to talk about them. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would say that spiritual space is space that is hospitable to the soul, that creates context in which people can centre down at deeper and deeper levels and start, lit quite literally, I know it's a cliche, but quite literally to find themselves. Yeah. To shift from the ego level and the persona, the mask level yeah. of functioning. Yeah. And letting go of the masks, even starting to let go of ego identities and just settling down into who it is that they are comfortable to be. Yeah. And that's the space at which love starts to open up. Uh -huh. You see? That's what's yeah. interesting about it. That you know the more when you're a mask, you can't fall in love with a mask or yeah. you're fooling yourself if you do. Yeah. That's the problem with outward beauty, with yeah. surface beauty. As you start to centre in, in more deeply and deeply into who a person is, the possibility for real connection, for real presence deepens. Yeah. The possibility for love deepens. Yeah, that's amazing. And I guess it's one concept which I'm exploring in the book is, is um, instead of coming out, the concept of coming out, what do you come into <laughs> when you reclaim your identity or when oh, you have a good. space to come very into good. that and that's transferable to any um you know coming out as poor coming out as black even though it's obviously more obvious than gay um but challenging that power dynamic of what do we because you know for example the queer community we've had our own language we've had our own forms of communication and identity and but because of heavy stigma we haven't been able to express that mm -hmm. so I guess that relates to the spirituality of place and getting to know each other in love. Mm. What do you think of that concept of coming into rather than I coming think it's out? hugely important. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. And, you know, we know each other well enough that I think I can say this. Mm -mm. Although I'm aware that it, you know, it could play a bit queer. Yeah. To some of your community. Yeah, yeah. And it is this. That I think that on its own, pride can be a very narcissistic movement. The the pride protest? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's on its own. And as a straight person, mm -hmm. that's something that I actually find off-putting about it. Yeah. And I find myself having to tolerate because I have to remind myself these are people who haven't been able to express their sexuality openly in the way that the rest of us Yeah take for granted so much that yeah. we become unconscious of it. Yeah. Therefore, it's like the cork has just come out of the bottle of champagne. Mm -mm. Yeah. And the great pink cannon. Yeah. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You remember your project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, exactly. it, it, it frothing all over the place and splashing everybody. Yeah. You see? And that can become a bit wearing if you're not a part of that yeah. theme yeah but fair enough it's a pro you know you've got to take the bottle the yeah. cork out of the bottle if the champagne is going to flow yeah but the question then comes what next because if a person's identity is only going to be their sexuality yeah that's a pretty shallow basis for identity yeah and so to me what's important is that what next is that as you start to deal with the issues that your sexuality might have thrown up, mm. 
or any other issue that you carry, your social class background or your, your race or, or, or whatever it might be, as you start to deal with that, you don't hold on to it as a fetish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you keep the process moving. Yeah. And you deepen through successive layers of tackling both issues within yourself and deepening into yourself. Mm -mm. So I can't speak for gay people, but I could imagine a process where the gay issue is what conscientizes you, to use Paolo Freire's term. Yeah, yeah. But then as you yourself have found in your work, it doesn't stop there because you then start finding yourself in solidarity with others. Yeah. And indeed, it's often been remarked upon and asked, you know, wh why is it that so many gay people are in radical roles in society? Uh-huh. And the answer that some of the psychologists give, forgive me, I can't name them yeah. off the top of my head, but one of the answers has to do with the psychology of deviance. Yeah. That if you are forced to be deviant along one parameter, then it opens up the potential for deviance relative to the consensus transfer straight mainstream society. Yeah. Along other parameters too. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, that, and that's what you're moving into. Yes. So it's not, as you say, if, you, if you're only focused on what you're getting out of, you're always looking back. Yeah, yeah. But if you're focused on what you're getting into, yeah. that opens profound questions about the nature of humanity. Yes. And how we use our lives, what it, what it means. To, to quote from Ram Das. do you know who I mean by Ram Dass? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. He got his latest book called um, Walking Each Other Home upstairs somewhere oh. uh, you know, amazing new book you've done about about the dying process um, Ram Dass, that old hippie guru um, who um, is a very old now, but he, he's a gay um, um, New Hampshire I think it was he was from, um, Jewish guy who hits a hippie trail yeah. and is a leading he's, he's one of my very favourite spiritual teachers, mm. and, and he talks about walking each other home that the name of the game, the name of the deep level of community, wow. is that we are all spiritually walking each other home. Mm. What are we walking each other home? We're walking each other deeper, excuse my language here, we're walking ourselves deeper and deeper into the God space. Yeah, not, yeah. Not how you use that expression, the God space. Yeah. In, into the grounding and the divine. Mm. That's that's what that's the name of the game that we're playing at. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's really important the point. Yes, yeah, she's wanting a food, but oh, so we're, we're trying to put her on a diet, so we're stretching the time with feed oh. her, so <laughs> she'll just have to wait. Yeah, yeah she says, get food. Um, it's interesting what you, it's really important you've got a critical perspective on pride, because on the narcissism of it. Well, I can, I can only say that when mm. invited by somebody like yourself. So yeah, yeah. You know, uh, one, one of the things I, well, yeah, yeah. generally, yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm very careful of, of um, you know, there was the issue recently, um, there was a pride march in Stornoway, the Isle of Lewis, where oh, I'm from, was which that? is was deeply that the first one? conservative. And I was wow. very careful, you know, what I said about that, because to say the kind of things I've just said, I need to have permission Legitimacy, to, yeah, yeah. To, to, to say it, you see. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can't just get on the Twitter and yeah. blast it off yeah, yeah. Um, from, a, from a straight yeah, of course. Of perspective. Course. But it's really important that people... In the in the best way, speak out against like the the range of issues because you know of course some people might presume that everyone who goes on Pride is a radical or left wing. No yeah, way. Yeah, not way. <laughs> Look at all the Tories who are gay. Tory gays, you gay. Do you know what I mean? So the, do you know what I mean? So this, uh, yeah, yeah. Where it's, it's come from? It's, it's been quite a turn up for the books, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been quite a turn up for the books, and you know, in a way that goes against the. Um, what I was just suggesting about the psychology of deviance, unless of course you consider it to be deviant to be a Tory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So one protest we did two or three years ago now, three years ago, was, um, well, the two major protests that we've done recently around, three major protests, four, four years ago, uh, UKIP LGBT marched on Pride, and so we held a kind oh. of... I know. So we had a funeral process to RIP Pride because we, some of us thought you can't be 
a bigot against everyone else and then reclaim your queer identity. Whoa. Second year we protested because, um, oh, what are they called? BAE Arms Company, BAE Systems, were marching on Pride. So, of course, you've got the military and the police. Who wow, on Pride, wow. But an arms company marched on Pride. Wow. So we had set up a campaign called No Pride in War. And then last year we did a protest. That's a bit, that's quite a challenging yeah, thing, I guess. isn't it? What, what do you think about UKIP and... We, we accept them all in the Quakers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, yeah. you see, you see, it's an interesting, you know, when you get behind that joke I just made. Yeah. It's not actually a joke. Yeah. Because what happens in a spiritual context... Yeah. 